Well, hi guys and girls, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room. This is a interlude project or interlude video between projects. I've got projects to do coming out my ears, and I've actually just finished a project, which is pretty amazing too. They come out really nice. If you haven't seen my video on the the low profile mill clamps go and check it out they're pretty cool I like them I'm really pleased with them but about six weeks ago I was approached probably two months ago I was approached by a gentleman from banggood.com to review some products and that's all very well to get something for nothing and say hey look this video is courtesy of banggood.com who I'm not sure whether you should be, you should actually go and have a look at or not. But it's a website that's a pretty good shopping website and I've seen some good reviews of some pretty good tools from this from this crowd. So I'm gonna go ahead, whether I'm actually prostituting myself, I'm not that person that has a lot of Chinese tools in their workshop. My tools are either they range from repurposed or reused or refound or reclaimed antiques through to new good quality tools through to rubbish that I've handmade myself through to top quality handmade merchandise that has come from friends so I'm not that Chinese tool person I've got a sign advice that was probably best value for money and it's not too shabby um, the light that I bought for my camera gantry come from Banggood and that's alright if you don't bump it or try and unscrew it or screw it around because it all just falls apart but it's not bad so I thought you're probably all interested in what this stuff is and you really don't want to spring the 40-50 bucks to get it yourself and I don't want to spring the 40 or 50 bucks to, to get it myself so that I can show you all. So when Bangle come along, the gentleman comes and sends me an email and says, pick something and I'll send it to you and you can review it, then that's a pretty good opportunity. So I thought, well, I'm going to take that and I'm going to find out what these are like. So let's have a look in here. Have a look at this box first comes in a in a a pretty reasonable plastic box it's not just a segmented clip together it's actually got a wire up the middle so that's all right it was in a plastic bag with a sticky fold over sticky lid that wasn't quite big enough for this box so the lid stuck on there and that's almost impossible to peel off that that come like that the other issue I've got with this box is that you haven't got a clue which way up it is it's the same on both sides so that side and that side also if you shake it around everything inside moves around so that's that's a bit of an issue i've got um what are we paying 40 35 40 bucks for this so it's not a huge issue and it's something that a piece of foam would fix but it is the same meat both ways up so you open it upside down nearly every time probably what i'm going to do is either stick one of those stickers on the front so I know or paint something on the front so I know what they are because being the wrong way up all the time that's just a pain this foam's not really thick enough so everything just falls out and that's a bit of an issue with, pro with precision tools I'm going to say that and these little angle parallels or angle angle blocks gauges that's that's what I decided I needed and when I was making those little low profile clamps these would have been really 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 useful but they didn't come in time and I didn't think of it until they were half finished anyway these are all wrapped up in in tissue and it's a fairly it's a good quality soft tissue it's not just hard tissue that's looks like it's probably impregnated with wax or something like that um, 
and they've got that wax or whatever it is all over them is just looking at them I might what I think I'm going to do next before we have any go any further we've had a look at the packaging I'm going to take all these off and probably give them a good clean up and give them a rub on a bit of ordinary writing paper just to, to get them all clean and then have a bit more of a look at them so I unwrapped all these and when you get looking closely they've got some laser engraving in the corner there that's a bit faint that one says 15 they might be machine engraved actually rather than laser because that one's a bit rough and this one says 30 um, this one's 25 I've given these a bit of a rub on a bit of paper to clean them um, that's a bit telling really because the ends in particular are pretty rough um, so we've got a couple of scratches in the paper here where the burrs have picked up the just picked up the paper so first thing I'm probably going to do with these is get a little diamond stone or a piece of arcandus and take all the sharp corners off until they're not grippy like that because there's quite a few of these corners there's a definite burr there and there so that's the first thing and that's a bit better so I'll go through all them and just find the the burrs there's another one there just before they really even get sat on the on the surface plate I'd like to get these somewhere near right we have a look they've got a, a grinder mark scuff mark along here which is really a bit unacceptable it's just just a little bit rough and a few marks across them if I was expecting something a bit higher end or if there's something that I might have spent more money on I would expect them to be a whole lot better than that uh, Stan Zinkowski made the comment that you can't buy the materials to, to make these for, for the price that you can get these so even if you regrind them you've got to be in front I don't have an ang I don't have a surface grinder so that's not really going to be something that I can do but they are quite sharp in places And same deal with this one too they're all like it just a little scuff mark along the edge and quite a few almost that, that scratch you can actually put your finger right nail in so that's quite noticeable It don't take much to take all those burrs off so there we go we've got them somewhere cleaned up to the point that I'm going to sit them actually and move them around on my my surface plate it's that took a little bit of doing you notice that they've all got a well nearly all of them that one's not too shabby on that side and it's got a, a a scrape mark where it's been deburred along both sides of that one these backs while they they do sort of sit up if I'm having a look at that and I don't know if you can see that on the camera I know this square is pretty, pretty close 
but just setting that one there and standing there I reckon we've got probably a probably a 15th hour gap I reckon we've probably got a 15th hour gap under that side if we turn this side this square around this side and I've given both of these a pretty good clean up and the gaps down here now so at best and even with very rudimentary very very rudimentary measuring techniques like putting that on a square you can't really tell that that's that's not square there or not so that way it's not bad um, this way is definitely out and I can tell that just by looking at it with a square beside it that we've got a gap under the bottom here and a gap under the top that way and looking at it this way if anything that's probably worse if you can see that um, try and find a sheet of paper there to put behind that You can see the sheet of paper there. Um, as far as holding square this way, they're not much good. Now, there's no calibration certificate with this set. So, you get what you pay for. I'm going to have a look at the angles and see what they're like. How close they are. As far as... As far as squares, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's not real square that way. Right? It's it's touching at the top there, and it's got a definite gap at the bottom. So that's my first impression. I'm going to set the sign bar up on at least one of them and run the, the indicator along these. It's a very difficult thing to do because they're not square this way. So any runoff at all is going to give you a false reading. Probably going to have a look at the hardness. They don't seem to be... They don't seem to be all that hard. A file will touch the corner there. And to my mind, that's not really particularly long, long wearing. But we'll have a bit of a look. I might set the sign bar up next. Just check probably the 30 degree one and sort of see where it is. And we might actually measure this and see sort of exactly how far out they are this way too and probably this way so let's have a look at the first setup if we have a look here at suburban tools app this is a pretty useful thing um, look it up and download it we put in the length of our sign bar which is a hundred millimeters in metric it's 3.93701 inches and we put in our angle which is 30 degrees and press the button and our calculator stack is 1.968505 so if we start at this end with a 105 Now I've just set this up with the scribe block and my little tense indicator which is a pretty good one from Switzerland which I had for years and years and years and very rarely use. Now this stack should be exactly right and I've given everything a clean and I've gone through and I've triple cleaned everything. I've cleaned the sign bar, I've cleaned the square, I've square cleaned all the gauge blocks. I've cleaned the so the I've cleaned the bottom of this um, 
everything's pretty good. Now, if we get down that end and we adjust this, probably. Very carefully to zero. And right on that edge so that we don't have to worry about the, the rock in this. Or the squareness that in, in this direction. This is pretty precise and that's on zero. So there we go, just checking the angle there. That's two points about a tenth of a thou under three thou there. In the same place that's about a tenth over. So that one's within about two tenths, which isn't too shabby that way. And that's That's probably something that you can live with for most workshop use. So I've gone right through them and this one seems to be the worst one. This is the five degree one. And this is... Um, sitting on four thou there. And about two thou there. So that one's out. Three point eight, two point four. So that one's out about one point four thou over the length. Now it's over three inches. If we work that out, if we do the math, that's out about two point four minutes. On the circle so it's not far and that's the worst one so I'm gonna go with the fact that this corner and this corner here without some way of measuring this is very difficult to tell whether this is square but I'm gonna go with the fact that this corner and the angle is not too shabby really um, it's certainly as good as anything you can make in your in your home shop and and I guess that's that's the the critical dimension here where I sort of have an issue is this angle here it's all fine and dandy but all these all these are either kicked that way or that way and it's compounded a bit because if you turn them over they're kicked the old, that way or that way too so these sides aren't parallel if we put that on there that's actually probably one of the better ones that way but there is at the top of the 30 degree one about a 10 thou gap against a ruler so to my mind that's probably the the biggest issue with them is that if you sit them like that and we sit a known square against it you've got quite a gap so to sum this up I guess the the issue I have with these is that yes they're, they're plenty good enough and yes all the other tools I have are plenty good enough but this is the weakest link and if I set this up in a vise and I set this up on top of it to machine an angle on it and I make this surface parallel with this surface then as we run a cut across there it's going to cut deeper on one side than the other and that's going to be pretty ugly and those sort of errors are going to creep in and that's why it's important to have reasonably good measuring tools and parallels and by reasonably good I mean 
as accurate as you can make. So that's my thoughts on these. They're quite nice. They do need a piece of carpet or cardboard or something cut to go in the box so they don't all rattle around. They do need some sort of a label on the top of the box so you don't open them up, upside down every time. They do need a little bit of work to deburr them and clean them. And you do need to go over and check them like this so that you know what to expect and what, what your, your greatest error is and where the weaknesses and strengths are in these. But apart from that, for $37.55 US, would I buy them? Probably they're useful enough. I would be inclined if I was spending the money to, to save up and to buy something that's probably a little bit better. Whether I would be disappointed. Um, there's a school of thought that that believes, and I sort of subscribe to this a bit, that Chinese tools and Chinese machines, you buy yourself a project and there's things to do with them all the time. And I would expect any machine tool or any, any precision tool that you buy that you would... They'd warrant a pretty strong inspection before you use them. But these are... They're okay. It's just that they're out quite a bit this way. Probably for machine shop use or for, for hobby use or or for maker use if you're, if you're setting up... A planer jig or a woodworking tool or a 3D printer they're well within the tolerances you're going to work in. Using them in a machine shop you've got to be mindful of little things like this and you need to do some inspection beforehand so that's my review that's what I feel about them I'm they're probably a tool that I'm going to use but I would love at some point an opportunity to dress them up and get them somewhere near right because I think there's a lot more a lot more potential in these than than you get straight out of the box I believe they could be a little bit harder that's another that's something else that's come out of this I don't think they're really hard enough to be to be durable but they're all right. So thanks for watching and be kind to each other. There'll be more soon, probably not tool reviews after this one, but we'll see what they say. And don't forget to like and subscribe.